Hey guys, we're going to the Mississippi Final Stands Interpretive Center today. The center interprets the Battle of Bryce's Crossroads and the Battle of Harrisburg, or what I call the Battle of Tupelo. The center is located in Bowen, Mississippi, about five or so miles east of the Bryce's Crossroads battlefield. The two battles, the one at Harrisburg and the one at Bryce's Crossroads, are considered to be the final stands of the Confederate cavalry for 1864, hence the final stands interpretive center. The center has a pretty cool museum and also maps and stories and things for specific locations for events that unfolded during these two battles. So come along with us. Let's go explore. Mr. Claude Gentry was born in July of 1902, just a few hundred yards north of the Mississippi Final Stands Interpretive Center. Mr. Claude devoted most of his life to the historical preservation of the Battle of Bryce's Crossroads. He had a log cabin museum which stood next to his home until 1998 and served as the forerunner of today's visitor center. The flag of each state that had men engaged in the battle is represented here in this first display of the museum. The flag of the United States is intended to represent the participation of the USCT in the battle. The museum gives a little shout out to the Corinth Contraband Experience, which is a fantastic exhibit, we'll call it, located in Corinth, Mississippi. I wanted to show you some of the portraits generally of Nathan Bedford Forrest in and around Battle of Bryce's Crossroads. These are all hung in the, what I call the video room where you watch a 20 some odd minute video about the battle. The staff here was super nice and incredibly attentive to our needs. So if you need to ask them a question, feel free to do just that. Both battles were fought in the summer of 1864 in Northeast Mississippi. You must remember that these battles were part of the Atlanta campaign. Second Lieutenant Thomas Cogley of Company F of the 7th Indiana Cavalry gives us a nice quote about how you can never know the full story until you've talked to each and every soldier. The walls are lined with different soldier stories. One of my favorites is this funny one. Henry Ewell says, I had pulled my cartridge box around on my hip so that I could get at it handier. He was hit in that cartridge box and it knocked him to the ground. And when he tried to get up, his pants had fallen down and it tripped him. He kicked at his feet and his pants flew straight off his legs into the face of one of his comrades who thought he had been hit by a cannonball and he couldn't figure out why he was still alive. Dyer's account of the battle is pretty interesting, but you'll get it when we make our way out to the battlefield. Really the same within the center as well. They worked real hard to get individual soldiers accounts of the battle. Let me tell you about Albert DJ Cashier. Albert served at Bryce's Crossroads in the 95th Illinois Regiment. He was born in Ireland in 1843 as Jenny Hodgers. Jenny enlisted under the name of Albert at the age of 19 in Belvedere, Illinois. Albert served a full three-term enlistment without being discovered. It was not until an automobile accident hospitalized Albert in 1911 that people figured out his secret. Cashier lived his entire adult life as a man, drew a pension, lived in the soldier's home, and even voted a couple of times, all of which she could not do as a woman. Albert died on October the 11th, 1914, in an insane asylum. Albert was engaged in battles at Vicksburg, Red River, and Bryce's Crossroads. Confederate Thomas Duncan was quoted as saying, but Forrest was there and a single blast of his clarion voice was worth 5,000 men in that vortex of danger and doubt. Artifacts from the battlefield. Did you know Buffalo Bill is at the Battle of Tupelo? 
quote from Buffalo Bill's autobiography about his time in Tupelo. He states, My story satisfied the guard, and I passed. I proceeded to the camp of the soldiers. By acting the part of a rural Tennessean, making little purchases from the Negro food stands, and staring open mouth at all the camp light, I picked up a great deal of information without once falling under suspicion. Here's a picture of the officers of the 59th USCT engaged at Bryce's Crossroads. Here is Baldy and George Guy. They were born into slavery in Colbert County, Alabama. And now some details about the 1st Illinois Light Artillery. What a neat collection of the tools of the trade of the cavalryman. Incredible display of cavalry officer swords, a couple of which are for sale, I think. My particular favorite one is that one in the front. It has USA inscribed on it. Next, you see the typical look of the Union soldier found at the Battle of Bryce's Crossroads. Notice the knapsack. Maybe that should be called a haversack. When this battle happened, it was June in Mississippi and very hot. You see some pretty cool debris from the battlefield. Ooh, look, a Spencer. This is an 1860 Spencer repeating rifle. It's 42 inches long and weighs 10 pounds. It has a manually cocked hammer and it's lever action and shoots 14 to 20, 52 caliber bullets a minute. They have some other really neat weapons, but the Spencer's my favorite. Here we have the cavalry officer's sword and field glasses and gloves, possibly much like the ones Forrest would have used when at Price's Crossroad. Here's a great representation of a Confederate cavalryman like those that would have been at Price's Crossroads. The museum does an incredible job of presenting the story of before, during, and after the battles. We hope you've been able to see, learn, and explore all about the Mississippi Final Stands Interpretive Center, and we hope that you will come to see it for yourself sometimes. Thank you.